I didn't yeah. know. Well, that's the one on the agenda. Yeah, well, yeah. it told me that the webinar was oh. um, not ready to go. Then I found the other email. So. Oh, OK. Well, also, the general public link, it would just put you into the waiting room. Yeah, yeah. No, I, was, I just that's yeah. something. Um, Got it. I was trying to do it on my phone, work phone, but uh, and then on here. I found the other yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, normally, normally Amber sends, but I just, OK, that's fine. Okay, so while we're meeting virtually, and Kim, do you have a little? Yes. yes. Otherwise, I can. I okay, great. Um, looks like I just put it to the back of my my. Okay. Um. Okay. Nope. That's the wrong doc. Hold on. Yes, there we go. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation. I hereby uh, call the, the June 16th meeting of the TAC to order. And our first order of business is public comment. There are no public with us today. So we will, um, and we don't have, I, are there meeting minutes? I didn't. Know. I didn't receive any. Um, no. Oh, and Eve Vogel, she told me she wants to come, but she's running a little late. So okay. he may pop into the audience. Okay. Uh, so our next order of business then is um, an update of the Safe Routes to School. Yeah, so actually just before we do that, um, Guilford, do you know if there's any update on continuing to meet virtually? Like currently it's allowed through July, is that correct? Uh, through July 15th, I believe. Okay. But that could be extended or? I believe it's up to the, it's, the legislature has to do it. But... Right. I mean, I love to see everybody in person, but it's so darn convenient too. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all receive that message from um, Christine Restrup? She's she said she's having trouble connecting this evening. Oh, just so. Oh. Is that my fault because I gave her the bad link? Oh, potentially. Okay, well let's try this again. But she also said in her email that she's just having trouble connecting tonight. So. All right, hold on. I'll just send her the link. Right but now, she also did that on her phone, so maybe her computer is having some problems or something. Did you send it, Tracy? I'm sending it right now. Okay, because I have, I can send it too. I just sent it. Okay, I thought I'd send her the right one, but maybe I didn't or something. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little issue with it, I think. Okay. I was just using the one that was on the posted meeting agenda, like on the website. So, um, who's giving the update for the safe routes to school? I'm going to give the update. Um, Christine is not available because her child is graduating from Wildwood, and they had sixth grade events. Oh, yay! Yay! yay. Because this is the last week of school. Um. So Christine and I have been busy with Safe Routes to School stuff. Uh, we have done data collection at all the schools just um, to do base counts of the number of kids walking and biking, and also to look at the current conditions at the schools. I've taken tons of pictures. So maybe Christine is in the audience. Did she? Oh, did you that's Eve. Me? Oh, OK. Um, and um, so that's all been going well. I mean, one thing that's a little sad is I guess traditionally, right, people, there were more kids who had biked and walked to schools than there are currently. What we found at Wildwood and Fort Rivers, it's probably like less than 15 kids a day are doing it. Um, yeah, and um, at Crocker Farm, we found the numbers were a little higher. There's that neighborhood right next yeah. to it, which is about half of the kids. Uh, one of the things is that the district now that they do, you know, when I've talked to people who grew up in Amherst, who are now parents or of, you know, K to 12 students or were parents and now their kids are older, 
that really the school district, they used to have a rule about not picking up kids like who lived anywhere near the school, like even within, I mean, the state law says that school districts don't need to provide bus transportation if a student K to six lives within two miles of a school. But I think in Amherst traditionally, I think it was one and a half miles. And so people would walk even like for Crocker Farm, they'd walk from Orchard Valley and things, which are, you know, relatively some pretty long distances or even from near my neighborhood. Well, Blue Hills Road is outside of the 1.5 miles, but like Dana and Lincoln are inside. And so sometimes kids would come down to Blue Hills Road so that they could get the bus instead of having to walk. Um, but now the districts, the schools, buses tend to pick up a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we found is that most of the kids who are walking or biking, like Wildwood and Fort Worth, they just choose to bike and walk and bike. And a lot of them have come from Boston or cities where there was a lot more biking, walking, and biking, but the culture has really changed a lot. I mean, you know, Derek Shea, the Crocker Farm principal, he brought up a good point about like, well, we did a lot of things in the 70s and 80s that we don't do anymore. And that's true. But at the same time, like in those neighborhoods, you used to have... Um, you know, just like groups of kids walking. And so there was like the whole culture of that. And now we don't do that as much. Yeah. Eve, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to say that, um, and I said this to Tracy by phone the other night, but um, the, the culture has really gone actively in the other direction. Like I had my son walk home from school starting in second grade and the school kind of flipped out about it. Um, and they've actually told other parents they won't allow it. So I think there's a role to be played to actually try to re rechange that culture. And it is different. You know, when we were in Cambridge for that year, five years ago, people were still walking and biking and as kids. So um, anyway, I think that that should be part of the vision. Yeah. What was the reason they gave you? I'm just curious. Sorry. To pry. I mean, they, they really act like it's unsafe. Um, they were like, oh my gosh, you're going to have him walk on UMass campus by himself? And I was like, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it was really weird. Um, the, I mean, the, by far the most dangerous part of the walk is the East Pleasant Crossing. Um, and they do have a crossing guard there, but the crossing guard's only there for like 10 minutes. So I would have to tell Ari to just book out of the school super fast. Um, but that's really the only dangerous part. Yeah. I actually had flagged that in when we've been looking, when Christy and I have been looking at the, um, just the infrastructure that, I mean, there's a lot of discussion, you know, some of the discussions with the new schools were, some of it was just about the intersections near Fort River, including the main East Pelham Road intersection and the, mm -hmm. the other one, the Route 9 intersection. But when you actually look at the infrastructure, like from an infrastructure standpoint, um, well, one, I think we're lucky that so many of our schools have like pretty decent sidewalk access, but those intersections near Fort River, the one at Main Street and East Street, actually, I mean, it seems to me, it seems pretty safe from a pedestrian, like for pedestrian crossings, like they have at each of them, at each of the legs, right? There's like pedestrian walk signals and two of the legs have countdowns and they have no right turns on red signs everywhere, which some of the people, some, you know, people have complained, wow, you can't, you know, that's really blocking up the traffic, no right turn on red, but that's actually so much safer for these kids being the pedestrians. It's like assuring that they're not getting cut off. Um, and that's, you know, where the crossing guard is there and things like that. So, I mean, I agree with Eve, I do, you know, and I had flagged it, I had sent some comments to the, um, like the working group that was looking at the elementary school building project, but the main intersection that I worry about with all, with, in terms of the school safety is just that East Pleasant crossing at Strong Street, that it is just a crosswalk. There's no like flashing lights or anything and cars could be going really fast down the hill on East Pleasant. Um, and it, you know, my, I mean, <laughs> not that you know we're advisory, but just in terms of like doing things to calm the traffic there and make sure it's safer with, you know, rectangular rapid flashing beacons or whatever could be done. Cause I do think it, I do think it's problematic for sure. Um, and so, yeah, so we are having a follow-up meeting um, with Deb Westmoreland, who's, you know, the director of communications for the district and the principals, Chris, uh, 
Christine Lindstrom and I are meeting with them next, no, two weeks on the 28th. And it's also going to have Lucy, who had met with us, she's the Safer School Coordinator for the four Western Mass counties. And um, moving forward, I mean, there are some things, you know, the, where the district could apply to for the different safe routes to school infrastructure programs, including the smaller one, which is signs and lines, which I do think that there could be some improvements, you know, with some of the signage, um, some of the signage is like inconsistent with the, uh, you know, the current cu current standards and also repainting some of the lines. Like I noticed at Crocker Farm, we were there on Tuesday and all the lanes, all the lines are painted really well, all the crosswalks, but at some of the other schools are not quite as good. Um, and like, for example, on the Wildwood driveway, there's like a bike lane marked, but like that's not painted at all. Like it's all just worn off and things. Um, so the district could always apply for that smaller grant, or there's also like a bigger grant, which can pay for um, intersection and infrastructure improvements up to two miles from the school, if it will encourage walking and biking. But to me, it's both the infrastructure. I mean, I feel like after looking at it, I mean, people do, there's a lot of concern about how unsafe everything is, but it seems pretty safe compared to like, if there were no sidewalks and things like that. Um, but I think it's just the culture too. And so Christine's talking, I mean, one of the things we're doing on the 28th is just talking about some events we can have around supporting, encouraging um, walking and biking to school, so. Yes, the town has always had it at least an informal policy of busing kids if there weren't adequate sidewalks. Right. Um, so if you were half a mile from the school and you, but you didn't have a sidewalk, you still got picked up on by, by the Yeah, school. but like, I think about like the person who told me they used to walk from second grade on, they walked from Orchard Valley to Crocker. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a sidewalk along that stretch, but there's also like some of those intersections that aren't so great, like Pomeroy and things like that there is so. a, there, there's a there, there, um we're, we're less likely to see free range kids these days for yeah for i mean years. in general right in yeah, yeah. Of, <laughs> I mean, know, I, in, I, in deerfield we tried walking school buses uh, um that had less than great less than stellar success the problem we had in deerfield and i don't know if it it's true here is we had so many parents who would choose to drive their kids yeah the school rather than put them on a bus even uh we, we'd have traffic jams in front of the elementary school at uh drop off and we actually had to have an office police officer down there uh, mm -hmm. from time to time to direct traffic because um there were just so many people who were driving well there. and people driving like that really increased during covid right because when amherst schools opened again in person they were encouraging, they basically said, we only want to have people on kids on the bus who need to take the bus. Like if parents can provide mm -hmm. private transportation, that is ideal. And so some parents are still doing that more than they used to, so. But it, it's also about kind of changing the culture because oh. I hate to say this, but even my children insist on taking the freaking car to school and they have like, and I am who I am and they have very nice bicycles and they can easily walk and it's less than half a mile and there is no bus. And it's just, you know, it's about like changing the mindset and like, you know, it really is. Uh, oh, I mean, my yeah, I was going to say, um, Tracy, I'd be happy to go to that meeting with you next week if, if that would be okay. Cause this, I I'm with Kim. I, this is something I've been thinking about and working on for a long time. And I, I see, you know, working with kids and and school districts is a key part of changing the broader culture. Like we've got to be raising kids who know how to walk and bike and think that that's the thing to do. Again, in Cambridge, the PE lesson in fourth grade is learning how to bike, you know, so it could yeah. be part of the Ooh, curriculum. That's well, awesome. You know, it's also interesting just in other schools. So um, we have friend colleagues who were overseas in Germany and their kids were going to the public school in Germany. And even from like early elementary there, it's expected that the kid like gets to school, you know, by walking mainly, um, mm -hmm. maybe biking, but on their own. Like they do not think that the parent should be accompanying the kids on even on the walk. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, whereas like American parents would tend to hover and stuff, they're just like, you don't, you shouldn't, you know, your kid can do this. 
Well, and this has been linked, so, right? To our right. epidemic oh, of yeah, anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? so. Yeah. Um, one thought I believe somebody mentioned previously that the schools had worked with Morse Hill. Because I mean, I know that like providing bikes, right? Not everybody's going to have it. And if you're going to include, make, try and make it wider acceptance, you need to have an ability to provide bikes so that people can have wider access to it. Because I mean, in the UK, we had a program in elementary school, um, like a bike safety course, and you, had, you brought your bike in. And it was like, I think it was after school. I can't honestly, I mean, it was so long ago. Um, but you ran it but then bike ownership there was you know a bit more a bit wider than it is here mm. so it was kind of more acceptable but now now we got to think about how can we get more bikes to people to right. enable that yeah yeah so the more program that they were running it was a crocker farm after school and they would provide it would be like a bike rodeo you know that would have some safety skills you know just having kids having fun with bikes um and they would provide bikes for that event but they wouldn't provide bikes generally I mean, there are some programs in the Valley that do provide free bikes. Yes, yeah, right, right. Um, no, I was just thinking for the event. But, right? yeah, and not, then not also, event. you know, Christine Lindstrom has also been in touch with the police department because the police department, they used to do their own bike radio. So I think there's some like opportunities for some. And I remember as a like beginning planner, like transportation planner, participating on bike rodeos like on a weekend or whatever. And we had like hundreds of kids come through and do our little safety course and things like that. I mean, those are some fun events. Just to, so. I was I was wondering since there is going to be a new school to replace Fort River eventually, if there would be a way to have our committee be part of planning the access to the building, the new building when that comes along, you know, where the sidewalks will be. If there's any way of encouraging more biking and walking by. The actual siding of the sidewalks yeah i mean we can ask about that i mean we, i think oh sorry Tracy. go ahead Marcus. i was just thinking i mean um i had a question for guilford about this too uh given the state is widening route nine are they considering putting a roundabout in at um at nine and southeast northeast street thing wherever that is no, not to my knowledge. <laughs> no, I mean, can we no. push for that to You know, they 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 don't they don't own Route Nine after you pass South Pleasant. Street. Oh, so it's ours. It's all us. Yes. Oh, okay. So we got. So we yeah. could do it. Um, and actually, I don't know how we're. I don't know how the school when they build a new school is going to pay for all the traffic upgrades, because the traffic upgrades aren't included in the school. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Oh, the MSBA, right? The MSBA is yeah. only funding stuff on site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, there will be questions. public meetings. This is Chris. Um, there will be public meetings um, that will review the plans for the school. There's going to be a planning board, site plan review. The design review board will have to review it. Um, I'm sure the town council will have to weigh in at some point. And so the TAC could have an opportunity to weigh in during that public meeting process. Right. That'd be good. I mean, Bruce, as I was saying, I mean, if you look closely at the access around the school, I mean, there are sidewalks pretty much like at all the intersections. I mean, there's some places that don't have them quite as much. Like if you go up Northeast Street, it ends within like half a mile or something. But, you know, if you're going towards Maine, which is where we saw a lot of the biker bicyclists coming from and the walkers, like Maine's got crosswalks, I mean, sidewalks all the way along from, you know, East Street all the way like into the center of town. And Route 9 does too, though there's some disjointed parts and some of it isn't that safe for pedestrians. So I did notice that it's really upgraded. Like once you get past those plazas, if you're coming from like that Fort River intersection into town, there's there's all those like little shopping plazas, like the two, some of the sidewalks really torn up there. Plus there's all those access, you know, those ingress, egress yeah. areas that aren't great for, you know, if anybody's walking. Um, but then once you get past those, it's like it's a beautiful sidewalk. Well, but the... all, yeah, but also another issue that we've talked about is it Pelham Road? What is the road that goes? It's Pelham, Pelham Road. That road is... has really awful sidewalks. Oh, like... it does. They're narrow and they have the mailboxes like right in the center. And people are also talking about now we all have these giant USA trash barrels that you can buy in the mailboxes and the trash barrels. I mean, that's terrible. But that, um, but that's something I think that 
that, you know, resurfacing or redoing, I mean, that that's something we should really think about at least because there are all those neighborhoods back behind uh, off of Pelham Road, you know, yeah. that easily so, people could walk, but, you know, you need to have some decent sidewalks. So people from Echo Hill that we talked to when we right. were on site, they, there is actually a path, which right. I had never yeah. taken before yeah. Yeah. Um, from, it's from like Pickering to, and it goes back, you know, to the Fort River Fields. When we were there, we didn't see any kids taking the path. And also I've heard it's not maintained in the winter. Right, mm -hmm. um, which is a problem with a bunch of the walking paths. I was also wondering too, just there is new affordable housing plans on along Route 9. Like if there's any way, I didn't look at it, but if there's any ways to kind of make some paths sort of directly from those areas, like to the school, instead of having to go down to the intersection. I mean, I think there's gonna, there's always gonna be a look, there's always gonna be a fair number of parents, like even, if we're working on improving like the culture, we're going to say Route 9 is just too busy for my kid to walk, even if it's like on the sidewalk. But there is a um, proposal. May I just um, yeah, wait a Chris, minute? Sure. So we've applied for um, MassWorks grant money to improve sidewalks along Belchertown Road from the intersection with Southeast Street all the way down to, I think it's Colonial Village entryway. So that whole stretch that goes in front of like the old motel and the mm -hmm. former Sonoma oh, right. station yeah. and down to um, the town property that was just purchased and along the oh, south, yeah. is it south side? Yeah, as well. So if we get that grant, <clears throat> we'll be able to improve the sidewalks as well as bike lanes along that stretch of Belcher right. Town. Okay, really, nice. Really good. That's great, yeah. And, and also, you know, I mean, all of these, perhaps something we can do with you know, to help improve overall sidewalk is if the money, if the, if there's money there for safe routes to school within two miles, you know, there is a lot of improvement that we could do just along many of those sidewalks, you know, and even if, like you said, you know, it's not a main one that students use, maybe by having a sidewalk that's flat and accessible, maybe more people will use it more students will use it you know all times of the year so well, yeah i mean so i know people who walk from echo hill along like Beltertown road like if you come out you know rolling green and things like those intersections you can walk all the way along like all the way to east street i mean but, some of the sidewalks not as good as other parts and stuff but yeah but even that might encourage you know less experienced riders uh, bike riders in the morning mm -hmm. you know sure yeah school and stuff so yeah for sure um so one thing is that so you know after oh christy and i were you know we're meeting and we are because we've been at each of the schools you know we are writing up sort of a summary report a, you know a walk audit type report but also with some data about who's walking and biking um i think i mean it might be we we've been in touch with this um safe reach to school coordinator Lucy, but then also, and also with the Walk Boston people, um, the chair of their board lives in Springfield and they both provide us like samples of walk audits and things too. I mean, I might run it just by the TAC before we submit it to the district mm -hmm. just to get some feedback, but um, we're trying to keep it very like not comprehensive per se, but more sort of strategic about recommendations for improvements. And I mean, and really because some of the inter infrastructure is not that bad, like it's really about, if we're actually gonna get kids to walk and bike, it's gonna be a lot of the, cult it's gonna be a lot about culture. Yeah. So. <laughs> so is that gonna be some of your recommendations like to do the kinds of, um, you know, what did, what did you call it, Bernie, that you did in Deerfield, you know, those uh, kinds of things. Walking, so give up, walking yeah. school bus. Walking school bus. Walking yeah. school bus, biking a school bus. I think I've always thought we should, you know, the, when they have the walk to school day, they should have a bike to school where the police cooperate and, you know, closing off half of East Pleasant and having people walk. Well, you know, well and like we down. said, like the fun events, like the, you know, walk, the like bike rodeos and mm -hmm. other stuff to just even get kids to get kids yeah. off screens outside and, and know, maybe sometimes educate parents also about how to do it themselves or support their kids to do it safely so <laughs> um yeah okay so that's what we got for that cool um, thank you that this is really exciting so thank you well and i'm excited that the district is interested i mean christine 
Yeah. And Strip really had some success with reaching out to them because we've never had success previously. So, but I, I think particularly yeah. maybe with a new school, like maybe there's some interest too. So, but, but also like, like I said, I mean, even, you know, around the high school, I mean, high school and the middle school is like getting kids just being oh, like, yeah. yeah, it's, it's great to do that. You can do it on your own. You don't need your parents. Like, oh, I you know? mean, so, I mean Kim, so Kim, I live probably half a mile from you and my son, my younger son, my 13 year old is often has pra basketball practices at the high school. Yeah. And he insists that I, so he's got to walk a mile to the high school or bike. And he insists that I drive him and pick him up. And sometimes I'm like, you could walk home from the high school. It's like downhill half the way. You're like, yeah. I take walks all the time. I walk by the high, it's like, yeah, but I literally kids. So it's something about making it more enticing. Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If friends are doing it, then you'll do it. I don't know, but it's it's ridiculous. Re like reducing all those trips would be great. Well, and I think you know one thing we talked about in the initial meeting with the district was um was just about because Safe Route to School is actually being expanded at the state level, like up to K to twelve. It's currently like K through eight, but. I mean, at the high school, there are environmental clubs and things like that. And so My not just on those, you know, not just cool. making it about like, say, like little, little kids safety, but actually be like, yeah. let's help the planet. Like how many, whatever, tons of carbon, yeah. like how many, like how much can we do? You know, like, can we have some events around that and get people excited? And yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I know. <laughs> Jeez. instead yeah, of the climate action of the should, not, should not just be about solar panels like getting so. people out of their friggin' cars would make more difference so. yeah. okay um, um so our next our next item is thank you for all of that discussion i think it's very useful uh, uh updates from the council and tso yeah so the main one i wanted to share is just because you know we had looked at kendrick park a number of times and north pleasant street and um, so at the council meeting on June 6, you know, they did pass both in term based on the recommendations from TSO and then also a counselor had asked for some modifications, um, but they did support, you know, two different, well, it's one big motion, but it's basically two different ideas that on an interim basis until the larger project is done where you widen the road and you put in the back and angled parking that the town would still look at implementing one way northbound traffic from McClellan to Triangle and to move the parking spaces over to the east side of the street and to limit the parking. And that, um, I mean, right, and to have some metered spaces. Um, and then, you know, longer term when the street is widened to create the handicapped spaces and back in angled parking, um, having some that's back in metered parking and then also some that is gonna be dual use like permit and um permit as well as metered which is a little complicated but i think they wanted to just make sure that there was enough permit parking and i don't know like in the summer i mean i'm i'm over there a lot and i never see hardly anybody parking <laughs> and the oh, there spaces, is no so. one they bike it every I mean, morning there's right no so now, yeah and there's lots of people when school is in session so um i don't know guilford do you have any sense of like when like I mean, I know the bigger project, right? There's no funding for it, so it'd be a while before, like, is it possible to turn it into Tracy. one way? Go ahead. No, I don't think so. Oh, I don't. I, there's no. There's no schedule, so I don't know. Okay. Like before the students return and like make it all. Okay. Oh, if we if we can calm some people down from applying for every grant there is in the world. <laughs> Maybe we could have some time. <laughs> okay. I mean, what's interesting is now, I mean, I do see a lot of people at the park, but I really think that a lot of people also like walk and bike to the park or they're already downtown and things like that. So it doesn't seem like there's tons and tons of demand for parking with the park. I think a lot of them mostly park at Garcia. Well, the parking can. Well, you, I mean, Marcus, there. that's what you said. That's, that's what you said you had been doing traditionally. So yeah. Yeah. But don't you think if you could park right along the park, Marcus, you would do that? Oh, every day. Yeah. So, and, and yeah. 
I, I and even if you had to, now, even today, if you, you had know, to back in, the signage yeah. up for the residential parking and all this sort of stuff. Right now, to park elsewhere, but if you put it next to it. This would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, I I have been biking past there recently, and I saw like kids jumping out of cars and going to the park on whatever that little strip of is it North Pleasant? That's it's North Pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. And I also saw kids like chasing, going, you know, across the street. And I was like, what are you without any parents to get to their car on the other side? And I was like, what, what's happening? I mean, I sat and watched this kid because I didn't want any cars to hit them, but yeah, it has to happen. You have to get the cars to the other side of the street. True. Well, and also, and the council has also approved like the raised crosswalk, right? Guilford at um, McClellan. Was that McClellan and yeah. North Pleasant Street? No funding, but it's all. In the... It will. It will yeah. be. So, okay. Well, hopefully by you know next year we'll get some of it. That'd be awesome. The, the other thing that's going on is inflation. No, oh, of course. We, yeah. We, we bit, we're required required to protect contractors in the state. So Mass DOT requires we have escalators for various things in our contracts. Um, so we're now facing the fact that even though we bid a project and it was bid in, in budget, we may end up over budget. So we're actually having to hold back on mm. a lot of work because we may need that money to pay for the work we're doing. Yeah. So I believe it. Every, everything is kind of weird right now. That's awful. Yeah, I mean, the prices are crazy. I can't even mm -hmm. imagine. And bikes, bike, even bikes are expensive. Everything's expensive. Well, so. and all the all the products are oil-based, right? Like tar and- But we were, I was trying to buy my kid a new bike and it's bikes are- Well, that's because everyone bought bikes. That's, well, that and, and EVs, but even so it's- <laughs> There are no bikes to be it's like had. bikes are like a thousand dollars or something for a bike. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then let's see. So the extra coming was potential upcoming referrals. Um, TSO, I mean, Andy's not here tonight, he said he couldn't make it. Um, I don't know of any referrals to us yet. There could be some later. I know two things on the TSO's plate is um, a council member who lives on Lincoln had brought back the idea of having some restrictions on Lincoln for parking, given um, the issues with a lot of overflow parking from UMass and um, you know people parking so close to the driveways and things similar to what we're seeing on North Pleasant Street, right? That it's, a, it's an issue for the sight lines, but um, it's not clear whether that will come back to attack or not. Um, and then there's also, there is also floating out there, I think it was a GOL too, it's just, the idea that under the mass general law towns can pass something and the speed limit like throughout town some like universal blanket limit <clears throat> because we're a city no well because we're a city but um oh, is that why we can do it yeah but i also think that it doesn't i mean personally and i talked to the white bike advocate that i've been in touch with in springfield about it i mean unless unless you actually do things to calm the traffic and you have enforcement, I don't know how much it helps. I mean, you can, again, and some of it's a culture thing, like about saying, you know, slow down in our downtowns and things, but you can't, I mean, if we just lower the speed limit without additional enforcement, when I, when I met with, um, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it sounds like, I mean, I've heard, you know, the town manager say that you could have like full, you know, full-time officer on like traffic related stuff, just because there's like enough of it <laughs> and parking and all these things, but we just don't have those resources either. We have, we have a lot going on. So, um, so we don't have any of those referrals yet, but we could. And then let's see, Kim, so I'll just go to the other items. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah, the other quick thing from TSO and somehow I, I had typed this up, but I guess it got left off the agenda, which is the idea about TAC presenting to TSO. So I talked with the town manager about it um, and I, the current idea is for tax charge to be revised somewhat first, 
Now, given that the charge is out of date, it dates back to 2006 and it was approved by the, there's things in there that don't really fit anymore. That instead of going to the TSO with at least a draft of that. So he's working on the draft and he's going to probably ask, you know, Chris Bress of Guilford Mooring and, and, and the TAC and so on for like some feedback and things first and then go to TSO. So that's going to be postponed a little bit. Okay. Probably to, you know, later in the summer. Tracy, did you say 2006? Because it was 2016. Oh, 2016. Sorry. You're correct. It's not, yeah, yeah it's not that old. No, it's not that old. Um, all right. So other continuing TAC items. So at the last meeting in which, you know, we only met once in May, I guess, um, we talked about the bike ped priorities network map and the GIS layers and so on. Um, I know that there had been somebody who had expressed interest in being an intern and helping with that map. And um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, the person who does a lot of GIS for the town, Mike Warner, had reached out to me just because I knew him from another project to just check in on that. Um, I don't know, Guilford, did you have any updates or anything on that or? Yeah, at some my, I'm gonna try to reach out to her at some point. Is she actually in town or is she I think she's out in for town. the summer? She's in town. All right. Great. Yeah, so Guilford, I was especially interested in that because I've been contacted by some people from the District 1 Neighborhood Association about doing some planning for North Amherst. And one of the one of the things they want to start thinking about is transportation. And so they've asked me to be on their committee to help lead their committee in thinking about transportation in North Amherst. Um, so I pulled out our old draft you know, ped and bike network map with all the annotations that I have because we did North Amherst first. So I have all those annotations um, and I can work from that, but it'd be really nice to actually have the, you know, the final map to work from instead if, if that could happen. Um, our goal is to have sort of a North Amherst plan by January. But I, I think also just having a, you know, a completed That's, network map, like it doesn't, I mean, go ahead, Gilford. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it's doable. I mean, she's available. Um, yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, I, we'd like to have the network map done this summer so that then we could use it for other things, you know. Well, and maybe, also, this summer is not going to happen. I mean, that's when what that's when Ollie has time, though, you know, because she's she's going to be a full time student starting in September. Yeah, but we're in summer now. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think it would take her that long. She's got enough skills. Just get her the layers; she can do it. Oh, we'll have a talk. The, um, so what about the rumor that we hear that Donna is going to form their own city? I haven't heard that one. Donna, you mean? Just yeah, Donna. One? Yeah. I, I, um, don't actually, think, I, I don't think so. You, um, well, yeah, I was going to ask you, Eve, about that, because I've been looking, now that I live in District 1, mm -hmm. um, I was actually wondering about joining the group, but there doesn't seem to be any information anywhere. Yeah, that's because that that's um, they wanted me to chair the thing, and I'm not doing anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, if you want to be part of no, the group, I mean, Marcus, not just not just on. the presentation stuff, but everything. I mean, everything. Like it's all very out of date. Uh, yeah, so. uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. But, but I, yeah, um, if you're wanna... if you're up for it, it'd be awesome to have someone else who's sort of been part of this history of thinking about this stuff. Um, yeah, I would love to actually. Yes, thank you. Okay, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and actually, yeah. speaking of just sort of history and things, so I mean, I know Amber's not here. I was going to ask her. Maybe I can follow up after with her. But when I was look, you know, I went searching just to see what what maps we did have of bike ped priority networks. Guilford and like the first thing that came up on my search was some. I don't know, maybe like some map from like 2005 or something. <laughs> um, and actually on the TAC page, we still have on the TAC page, we have like links to, well, so there's a bicycling link. I think that's probably where the network map is, but we also have a public works committee link and a public transportation and bike committee link, which I think those made up, made sense when the TAC page, TAC was first created, but I don't know if we want to keep those links like permanently attached to TAC's page. What do you think? Anyway, then maybe we can start to move some of that stuff off. You're muted. Yeah, it's up to you. You guys wanted to have it when we first started and we just never yeah. got back to it. If you so want right, to take it out, you can have it. I think, right, it. so TAC was created in 
2016. I don't know. I think it makes sense to not necessarily have our, all that archival stuff, but well, and I think that's too where that old biking link is, the one that's outdated. So, um, yeah. Okay, and do you, so go for just like, so when like working with Ollie, and this was a question that had come up just when Mike Warner had reached out to me too, is like we do, you do have like markups or whatever of all the, but all the stuff we decided at those five or six meetings <laughs> last year about what we were changing. Yeah, I think because my notes, my notes are pretty poor. So we have some, but probably Eve's are probably better. We could probably start there. No, I we mean, all have mine, like mine only have North Amherst, so they're good for North Amherst. But I think after that point, you were the one that was annotating. Yes. Yeah, but you were. There's, there's somewhere in my files. Yeah, I mean, so we could, you know, because of Zoom, we could go back and rewatch those meetings. But if if anybody has those notes, it would be helpful. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, because if, I mean, know, because that's what Ollie's going to need, like when she's or whoever is going to do the map updates, or they're going to need those notes. Are you thinking you're going to be able to hire Ollie Guilford? Uh, we need to find more about Ollie. Yeah, I mean, there's money. Okay. I mean, there's I think she sent she sent her resume, didn't she? She did. There's, there's money to hire people. There's nobody who wants to work. So if you have someone who wants to work, that's great. Yeah, uh, I think she wants to work. So I think you should hire her while she's got time to do it. Yeah, I think you have a connection right there. Yeah, that this, just Stephanie. I don't even. We haven't met her. I've seen you, but anyway, um, <laughs> I'm a former TAC member, but I'm also in the geography program at UMass. So this is a GIST graduate student. So she comes with strong skills. And then Stefan, are you a graduate now too? Did you graduate? I graduated in May yeah, yeah, last month. Nice. Where did you graduate from? Congratulations. Uh, CMAS Center School of Public Policy. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah. Any, any works for the um, UMass Transit? Yes. Fantastic. Wow. Oh. Okay, uh, great. So, all right. Well, hopefully by the time we have a ne our next meeting, we'll have some updates on that because... I'd love to move the map along if we can. Um, yeah, Guilford, do you want me to facilitate a meeting, like and do a when to meet to have you and Ollie meet? Um, no, let me just, I'll, well, if you want to send me the, uh, yeah, if you want to try to get send, send some stuff going, I have some things happening in the next two weeks. So it's going to be a little hard to do it. So we'll see what happens. So like the week of June 27th would be good for you? Uh, as long as it's like the 29th or 30th okay i'll send an email about right. that okay thanks eve okay so next tac item um tac members um just so i'd been contacted by angela mills of the town manager's office just about that we did have some expiring appointments i know the town manager is he's been advertising for members for a lot of committees um because there's so many um positions that expire in every june <laughs> um so i don't know if he's heard from anybody you know to join the tac yet um in my understanding who, I think, who is getting kicked out now i don't think Sorry, anybody's remember. getting kicked Mar well marcus your term is up right so oh it is i didn't realize i think you, yeah. I think you can did you hear from them i thought i thought no i, I haven't heard anything contact oh, okay I, no. I will i will not be my term is up and i will okay. not be I will not okay. be returning. Um, oh. I'm, I'm backing off on backing off on commitments, both um, town wide and sure. You know, personal. Um, but you know, I'm looking at the screen here. Uh, it's it's Bruce, me, and Marcus who are right. All That's what I think. Turned yeah. out, and um, I mean, if you uh, uh, if if you uh, uh, send a uh, just send a note to uh, the the uh, town manager's office saying you want to be reappointed i think that will be sufficient yeah marcus if you yeah. want to send a note like that to angela that's great yeah i'll have to yeah i, and I, I, up, so, yeah. I will and, do the same and, oh. I, and i think um i think bruce i wasn't sure because you had been serving before if they were going to say you yeah they want you to step down but normally i think the rule is that as long as until there's a new person appointed to the position like somebody can continue to serve as a member unless they don't want to like 
after Aaron Hayden stepped down as chair, right? He said, I'm done. Like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be part of the committee anymore. So, um, but so I, I, I would tell them that uh, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to serve until someone, right. if somebody wants to replace me, then I, I would happily step aside. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, um, and we've had the discussions previously about, you know, how, who we'd like to see as TAC members and if we can diversify and things like that. And, well, if you so. have folks you know, my, yeah. my experience with this is you can put as many advertisements up as you, you know, you care to. You're not going <laughs> to necessarily get people. People like to be asked. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's all about folks, right? If you know folks who want to be, might be on the committee, might be interested, uh, maybe somebody who just has an interesting occupational title talk with them. Uh, I'm going to suggest Definitely. that to my, uh, the two counselors here in district five, uh, they've got a, a district meeting coming up and I'm going to, I'm going to ask them to uh, sure. you know, let them know that there's a vacancy on the tech. Yeah. Uh, one and, um, uh, try to encourage people and use the, uh, the discussion we had about the yeah. down here or roundabout down here is a, is a point, uh, to, you know, gen up some interest. Well, in District 5, doesn't it? It actually includes like all the way out to like Beltertown Road. Yeah. And things too. So yeah. it includes Amherst Woods. And I mean, it's a pretty yeah. big area. Right. Um, that's a great um, idea for the district meetings. So yeah, our, our District 5 committee is not, uh, our, our District 5 Citizens Committee has not been very active. Uh, but we, when we were, we did compile a list of all the vacancies and yeah. uh, 30 or so committees that the Town managers responsible. Sure. For, and for Donna, training. if if any uh, Donna people want to join, Eve. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, that seems like the secretive place to be right now. <laughs> I think never find any information on Donna. I think it'd be good to get someone who doesn't own a car and no. low income apartment complex and has Absolutely. kids in the um, schools although you know is there any opportunity from Amherst um, in its effort to diversify to pay someone like that I mean honestly if you want to actually get low-income people who are in that kind of situation that's probably what you need to do yeah, I was going to say those people the person you just described doesn't sound like they have a lot of extra time yeah no you you absolutely would have to pay them um, is, well, there I mean, any, is there any money in town the, to do that the castle has talked about that you know, with some of these committees where they definitely want diverse members. I don't know what the final, it's, I mean, it's complicated. If you've got, yeah. but if you've got, if you've got, uh, if, you've got a, a, uh, uh, if you've got a job or jobs, you know, typical couple, right? Uh, two, two, two parents working, two kids, there ain't a lot of time. No. Okay. Lot of time. And if you have one parent, uh -huh. you got less time. Single parent, if you're a single parent family, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you you yeah, can't pay people enough to, uh, no. uh, to 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 get them to free the time up. Well, as these guys I, know, um, as a single parent, I was on the PTBC for years. Um, no, I, I just know. brought my child along to the 4 p.m. meetings, and that's no. why they were at 4 p.m. So it's not it, impossible. It a, but I had the you know I had a salary to make the flexibility work. Um, oh, I mean, I, it's, I it's challenging in general. Yeah. But as, yeah. A, as a working grandfather, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. you know, three three kids are my 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 uh, my partner uh, said the um, she always gave the advice to uh, that you you never should have more kids than you have hands. And of course, my <laughs> um, my my offspring has listened to that advice. So um, oh, well, so we have extra hands. All right. <laughs> well, so okay. I mean, the other thing too, I think that Eve, as you're like the group of that you're talking about is who's being underrepresented, like they're a desired group by a lot of committees, right? And the towns continue to create new committees that are specially aimed at like their interests too. So it does become more challenging, but yeah. What do you know, Tracy, about their efforts to consider paying such people? Well, it came up at the council meeting just as they were trying to create, I think like the, um, that committee that's like gonna help with crests and things like the community safety working group. So they, yeah. there was discussions just about the new committee that was being created and how can you, get people to participate, you know, what incentives, right? So town meeting, they used to have the thing with the childcare and things like that, but just to provide some, I mean, personally, I think that having the Zoom helps because you could somewhat, you know, like parent, depending on the kid, you could somewhat parent <laughs> from home, like while there's a meeting going on. And if you have to actually be in person, it like becomes more challenging, but. Absolutely. You know, I, I, yeah, mean, I mean, I mean, I'm I don't, sorry, I'm right now, I'm on my phone. 
Yeah, so I'm cleaning out a car ready to go camping this weekend because my That's wife so. is off with the kids doing something else. So yeah. <laughs> Parent parents are busy people. I drove, I mean, as I I drove over four hundred miles last weekend for my kids' activities. And it and I was out of the house for about twenty hours. And then on Sunday night, you're like, hey, where would the weekend go? <laughs> so yeah, exactly. yeah. Chris, do you know if, if there's any effort in town oh. to try to pay low income people to, to participate in committees? I think there's um, a lot of talk about it. And the communications people um, <clears throat> have been mulling over the idea, you know, of providing when we are in person, you know, food and babysitting and transportation and different things like that. Um, there isn't the budget for that right now. So um, it is being talked about. Yeah, I mean, I can look into what, I don't remember what the council, you know, what the final resolution and it's, I mean, I think it's still in progress. I don't think it was something that yeah. was implemented with that committee, but yeah, I can, no, I can report well. back. Yeah. There, the I things say that, with, thing that, excuse me, uh, go ahead, Mark. No, you go ahead. Well, the things that people mentioned to me, other than our, you know, time constraints is meetings go on too long. Meetings are too frequent. Um, there's um, always a prospect of, of like negative comments and blowback um, via social media. Uh, you know, folks are concerned about that. And, and you know, frankly, um, <laughs> having come from a low income family, um, I and. I can, and, and done this stuff for, my son has reminded me, for 40 years. I don't think paying people is going to make a difference. I, I think being respectful of people in how things are scheduled and how time is used, giving people very precise kinds of targets and things to do, um, I, I, I think that will, be, that will be key. The other thing will be to do the kind of outreach that's necessary to convince folks that they might have some impact and they, you know, and, and they can have an interest. And that takes a, that takes some one-to-one, that takes some door mm -hmm, knocking right. some conversations. It isn't a question of, you know, it isn't a question of, well, if they're poor and we pay them, they'll, they'll, they'll come up. Mm -hmm. It's time and it's respect. And one of the things that's nice about Zoom meetings is, is that, you know, as people have mentioned, you, you, you've got a greater degree of flexibility. You can have the kid running around um, and, you know, click off the sound and- Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> but yeah. um, you know, sort of, but yeah. even then, I mean, even- No, of course. Uh, we, we've had, uh, uh, we, we, I, I've seen people, uh, uh, you know, uh, particularly single parents, uh, flame out even, even via the Zoom piece. So it's not a question of, it, it's, it's a question of really telling people what mm -hmm. you're going to do, being respectful, respectful about how their time is used and insulating them some if they, um, right. you know, from the, 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 the rock, the, the uh, commentariat here in Amherst that seems to just spring up more than in other communities that I've been either involved with or lived. In. Um, so, you know, that's, it's it's a tall order it, it really is a tall order well and, i mean fortunately i think that TAC we're not like a super political committee right and yeah we try not to be like to try to you know just focus on like safety and facts and things like that and so i don't so see mention a roundabout to <laughs> <laughs> you know i gotta we still have to teach people. i feel like i need to do some informational videos um because about navigating roundabouts, but also because even like when UMass had the, um, you know, had all their graduations and things like all those police ITS signs, they, they said like, go up to the rotary. I mean, people just use like rotaries roundabouts. It's all like interchangeable and yeah. So, um, no, I mean, but I think, I definitely think it's important to feel like you can make it. I feel like the tact that we have been like making a difference in things. So we're not just meeting to meet and if we try to keep the agendas pretty tight and the meetings short, I think that helps, right? And sometimes we're meeting one time, once a month, and sometimes we're meeting twice. And Guilford, did you have, you raise your hand? And you're on mute. Just wanted to say, I did a field trip to Carmel, Indiana, drove through the oh, roundabouts. Roundabout. Wait, is that the town with the hundreds of roundabouts, right? Yes. And? It's great. 
<laughs> don't, they, they don't have any single lane roundabouts though. They're all doubles uh -oh. and they all work great. Right. So how do they work? I mean, I don't know if are the doubles as safe for like bikes and pets. They don't to me yeah, they don't yeah. seem as they're safe. Well, so it's it's Indiana, so there's lots of space. It's not like New England okay. where there's no space. Um, so they have big sidewalks. Cool. Cool. Um thank so, you. So in in with that context, let's yes. get back on track. Let's get back so, on track. Okay. Um, our next one is um North. North right so the reason i brought this one up is because this is also still on tso's like carryover agenda from the last council the reality right is that um there's no funding for it yet it's something that's been there for a long time um the reason i put it on our agenda is because we did do those great site visits there but tracy and then, sorry what was the topic i didn't hear no it was about north pleasant the eastman to pine okay um okay yeah, North Pleasant, right. So, I mean, basically it was just that it had been referred to us from TSO and it's still a carryover item. The TSO has talked about having hearings on it and things, but with some of the other projects that have come up, it's not really, it's much of a priority and it doesn't have the funding right now. The reason I put it on our agenda, since we did the site visits, it'd still be good to like, I'd, I'd like to just, because we did that work to just submit something still. So, um, I had gotten like pulled into other things, so I didn't write anything up. But if somebody wanted to help me just, you know, write something up, we could. I just want to kind of have it on the record. And then when the town comes back to it. Well, perhaps that's something we can work on for our next meeting and be happy sure. to look at. I, if you if you get something started, I'm happy to look at it as well. So, yeah, we for the next meeting, I'd like to write up this um, Safer to the School. Oh, stuff. okay, great. And okay. then Christine and I, Christine Lindstrom and I will just, once attack just checks it over, we'll send it into the district. Great. Okay. So that's, um, that yeah, so that's our, for, mm -hmm. that's our agenda item for next time. Okay. <laughs> but just to not have North Pleasant Street like disappear, like to do it sometime this summer. So maybe the next meeting, the meeting. Maybe after. the next meeting. Sounds good. And hey, and there we are. So number seven, Kim, update, yes. upcoming meeting dates. Okay. So we typically meet on the first and the third um, Thursday of the month. And so the first week is the seventh. Uh, and we don't, you know, we don't, I think TSO, they're not meeting until like the end of the month. Like I guess we're meeting on the 30th. I don't know whether anything will be referred to us. They don't actually have, I heard from Dorothy Pam this morning, they don't even have anything for their agenda. So I'm not even 100% sure they're gonna meet on the 30th. Um, so we don't, I mean, the main item I would have for the seventh would be just like to follow up on the safe reach to school stuff. Um, you know, and if there are any referrals, like do we, oh, and hopefully we can, see if there's any updates about the bike ped map and like getting Ollie set up to do that work. Does anybody else have anything pressing for that? So do you, you think you guys might have the um, update for the, um, for the, the safe route to school? Well, I mean, the idea, like the report that we want, the report I want to submit to the district is going to be like, it's not going to be some like giant, like comprehensive, like 50 page yeah. report. And so we've taken the pictures, you know, and we're going to have the narrative, a couple of pages of narrative for each school. And yeah, I think that that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, we, so um, I, I could be available. I'm available on the seventh because okay. like we might not have a huge agenda from the TSO or we, right. might, we might get something, but I am not available on the 21st of July. Okay. So, okay, so the only thing I had for the 21st was um, Mindy Dom had put me in touch with the Western Mass Rail Advocates, and I followed up with the person, and I heard back from them yesterday that I just told them that we normally meet on the first and the third um, Thursdays and so he said he is available on the 21st but I could see if we don't have anything push pressing on the 21st I'm fine with meeting less in the summer I mean and that we could always maybe because right after that right and then you go to like August 4th or something maybe we could have a TAC meeting August 4th yep 
and and right so we're we're doing a good job we're um limiting people's time <laughs> and things so i could see if he's available then unless we feel like there's anything pressing right. that we need to do um and then are, i'm are, are you guys all are, are people available on those dates stefan bruce marcus yes i am okay what day was the eighth you said no so the the august 4th oh august 4th uh yeah yeah it should be cool. okay yeah. all right yeah that should be good so, so, that works. so perhaps that's those are some goals and at least we can then structure our right. you know our our meetings or yeah. our target dates for those 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 meetings right so we will definitely have a meeting on august 4th and we can have one on the 21st yeah. even though kim's not available if we okay. have yeah. agenda items i'm not going to be available on the 18th um uh, and then we of august yeah okay. push into the year um and then I don't, you know, I don't know, Kim, like I'm hoping that we'll, like you and I will be able to present to yes. TSO like in August sometime yes. or something. So I agree. Yes. So, okay. So that's that. So, so that might be an agenda item for our August 4th meeting. Right. To check in on that. Talking, yeah. Telling people what we're planning to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is the committee, because I want I, I need to um, get some notice to my, uh, my reps, my counselors. So okay. You're going to continue to meet from five to. We 7. yeah. We we decided that we like we talked about this because we had changed from five to five thirty, like based on Kim's schedule. Then it seemed like five thirty mm -hmm. worked better for people yeah. than five. I'm okay with that for now. Like okay. if if we Just do so have I, yeah. yeah, I mean evening meetings can be hard for people, but then. You know, it can be hard for people earlier too. Right. Like when but I was there's, again, there's no, there's I no mean, perfect time. I don't yeah, know, this so. is for, for a lot of a lot yeah, of I mean, for a I lot mean, of young families. This is supper time. Yeah. Um. You know, supper time and and kids go to bed. Um, right. So, uh, you, you know, but there's okay. never. I mean, we could push it back. We could push it well, back to start at five. But there's summer. no reason over the well, summer. No, not. over the summer this way. I mean, I mm -hmm. think, I think that's really mm -hmm. valid and we can, you know, evaluate, reevaluate the time starting in September, particularly right. if we're interested in having, like, I totally agree. This is family time now. <laughs> I mean, my family's waiting in the other room for me right now, oh, Okay, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's fine. They, I can do that. I, cause I don't have little kids anymore. So, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I understand what your point, Bernie, uh, it, totally it, you know like I, like i said and marcus I, I, and, I, and i think i mean i think five can be more convenient than 5 30 but but also like eight o'clock could be easier for parents yeah that's possible yeah. Bad, you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Sort of. yeah i mean well, five and, is gonna be fine for me because if, my daughter's no longer in pre preschool right and, so it, and, and if we're able to like meet on zoom too right because if it's 8 p.m you don't right. really want to be leaving no. your house at 8 p.m <laughs> correct but zoom so, right yeah. so i mean i i think the afternoon evening like early evenings are better than i mean back when i was on public transportation and bike committee before we'd always meet at like 9 a.m like that's not convenient for almost anybody no <laughs> But we were, but it, we had, we did it because we had so many staff people attending, like between planning and like meals would be there and Guilford, of course, and somebody from UMass Transit and Five College Inc. And right. so it was kind of, sort of shaped around them, but it's not ideal for people who have other jobs to be at at nine or 10 a.m. So, okay. Great. Um, so are there any other um, announcements? or comments i'd just like to thank everybody i, I oh, thank you, know, you real uh the last couple of years has been a real uh learning experience for me i don't know how much i've contributed but i've certainly learned a lot and i it's a, this has been a great group of people to work with but i mean, uh, well, i really appreciate all the effort that, one, that, that I, goes into the I, goes into the, the process and, uh, and, i appreciate and, yeah. i bernie i appreciate all your knowledge from doing you know bike ped transportation stuff in other communities too so, so well it was we great it was, it was great I, to have the walk. i think also like your procedural like and your like other like you you bring in a, a, a set of expertise that 
you know, it, and experience that some of us don't, you know, a lot of us don't have. So I really appreciate that, Bernie. I also thank just you. appreciate yeah, no, Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. Thank you for your service, you know, Bernie. Person. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> have a good summer. Oh, indeed. Yeah, yeah. It's been so, a pleasure um, getting to know you. Thank yeah. you. And, um, do we have anything else? So, I mean, I'll just a couple quick like comments, announcements. So I've been attending the Disability Access Advisory Committee meetings. They met earlier this week. Um, and we talked about, you know, interests of sh like shared interests, including going back, even though it's the middle of summer now, going back to thinking about snow shoveling <laughs> and sidewalks. Um, and um, we also talked about the like Amity, like how Amity Street now has a the upper part of it, which are beautiful, they're beautiful. It's a really nice project on both sides of the street. They're wide and smooth and the crosswalks are great and everything. But we also talked about the issue, you know, going down Amity where the hill gets steeper. Um, and one of the things is that because it's steeper, like what does that mean with ADA? And some people on the Disability Access Advisory Committee know way more about the ADA than I do, but just in terms of that, there's there are you know way, ways you can get have like waivers from the ADA. Because I mean, there are places where you always are gonna have like steep, steep sidewalks or steep roads, and you should still be able to like improve them <laughs> and things like it shouldn't. So I don't know. The way the, the way ADA is going though, you won't be able to. Really? Yeah, because they want to actually have the ADA requirements for private properties apply to the roadways. Um, the waiver we have now is we can do it if it matches the road grade. Otherwise, we have to file for a complete waiver, which is a very long, it's a bit of a process. And we have to show why we can't meet those requirements, which means why we can't take land from other people as well so it's a little but like on the case but then the case of like you know if you do there are places that have grades right like like on the case of amity and i know the grade gets up to like eight percent or seven you know it's pretty steep in some sections but if there's like tree roots and the sidewalks in disrepair there's Te technically some if you fix it and you don't make it make come you don't make it comply with one of those two either it has to match the, the grade of the road or you have to match the ada requirements off would the road can, which you can never really do right at eight i mean you'd have to have like yeah. you know, switch back you switch back is the problem which you can't yeah. really yeah and it's the problem on amity because when you go down amity street the sidewalk is very much steeper than the oh. roadway uh -huh. On both sides, I mean, right? Both yes. Sides. On both sides. Oh, you know, interesting. It's just, it, you know, I have a friend who has a child in a wheelchair at the bottom of Amity, and and it's just sad to me that that kid can't go anywhere, you know, by himself. So it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I mean, just just to make it smoother and improve it, then yeah. if you. If you do a poll of how many people have wheelchairs out there now that aren't motorized, I mean, most of them are motorized now. Yes, so. they are. Yeah. Well, and I just think about all the places like, you know, that have steep hills, like you still want to be able to fix, <laughs> you still want to be able to fix stuff. So sure. anyway, that was just so a question why... that came up there. And, and we were also talking about the um, snow shoveling and I've been in touch and, I, and then yesterday I was in a Walk Boston meeting with their um, network and they, you know, that's an issue that Walk Boston's been working on a lot at, with state DOT and things is just trying to address some of it. Because one of the things with the mass DOT is that they're really committed to doing a lot more complete streets and that so when they do these major roadway projects they're adding, they're requiring sidewalks to be added. But like, if you look at the example of Hadley, which is what I think a lot about because it's near my house, but like you have this brand new beautiful sidewalk that goes from University Drive to the Hampshire Mall, and then nobody's responsible for clearing the snow in the winter, right? If you ask the town, they'll say the DOT is responsible. If you ask the DOT, they'll say the town's responsible. Like Hadley Town Meeting didn't pass something to say the property owners are responsible. So you have this beautiful sidewalk 
and then it's not really maintained and then people are back and with their you know walking and wheelchairing and stuff in the road and then on top of that this dot contractors for the plowing like even if some people have cleared the sidewalk like they'll shove all the snow back up and they'll also do it at like the curb cuts and stuff like they'll make you know 10 foot piles and i mean which contributes to the issue too so if you look at the dot snow plowing contracts like it says that they are not allowed the plowers aren't allowed to shove snow off of bridges like onto if there's railroad tracks or roads underneath so i'd i mean and um, i'd like to see something similar like for like curb cuts and stuff you can't you can't put like 15 foot piles of snow at the curb cuts and so actually one of the walk Boston people is like documenting stuff but they've been looking at contracts from other dots including new york state which has more restrictions but to start to change some of that so that's cool but it's not easy i don't know they have a lot of dot has a lot of trouble finding snowplow contractors Mm. for the sidewalks especially i mean for western mass in general but especially the sidewalks they don't all have the fancy town of amherst type snow plow for the sidewalks right <laughs> Bill, for, do you have do you still have two of those or one of those just one i just remember the con conversations at town meeting when people said when people would go and they would say well why can't you just hook up their lawn tractor with that? anyway that's town meeting so okay um yeah, that was it. And then I will, so I'll contact this Western Mass person. I'll see if he's available on the 4th, of August 4th. So, yeah. okay, great. So Bruce, you want anything else, Kim? No. Bruce? Bruce? Move to adjourn. Second. All right. Second. All right, everybody have a nice night. Okay. Have a Take good care. night. Enjoy. Nice, Tracy. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Bye, Tracy. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bernie. Bye, Bernie. Bye.